Hey, morning everyone. So sorry I couldn't be there for the class today. As you can see from my face right here, I have shingles and I'm not able to make it to class today. And I cannot afford to miss any more classes, especially for all of you. So I hope you guys are going, I mean, doing really well for your, I mean, progressing quite well for your assignment. And um, I hope you guys have understood whatever it is that I've thought thus far and my topic for today. So, the, today's live stream is going to be a little bit different than usual. I will be interacting with you live on live chat, which is like on here. I have it on here. So, um, if you have any questions like to ask me, especially regarding your assignment, please do uh, please do send me a chat message that I'm operating on two computers right here, on my desktop and on my laptop. So, if you're watching this live, just put in any questions that you may have regarding the topic or regarding your assignment or regarding whatever it is that you want to ask me on the uh, chat right there and I'll try my best to answer whatever I can. All right, so uh, forgive me for the uh, squeaky chair sound that you're gonna see and if you cannot stand looking at my shingles face, just turn the audio way up and look away. All right, this is the first time that I'm actually doing this live stream for my lectures. So if you have any comments or any feedback or any questions that you ask me, please comment down below. All right, so if you've never participated in a YouTube live stream before, so you can actually type down your comments down there and just send me messages um, or anything. Or even if there is something wrong with the live stream, let's say you couldn't see anything, like the audio is delayed, it's buffering, just send me a message down there and I will try my best to resolve it for you, all right? So, um, as of now, I see there are two people watching, so hi. So without further ado, let's get the big elephant out of the room first. If you're working on your assignment and you are still waiting for my letter, okay, do drop me, do, do get me your group member to send me a message or, or at least an email dating, or, I mean stating all of your group members' names and the student ID and their IC number. So I will try to send a letter to Miss Vera by the end of today if I can or if I'm well enough, then I will get Miss Vera to print out the letter on the school letterhead or the college letterhead then you can collect from Miss Vera tomorrow or on Wednesday. Alright, so for those of you who are still working on the assignment, please do that. And if you have any questions regarding your assignments, please drop me a message in the chat box down below. Alright, so without further ado, I will go into today's lecture. Now today's lecture, because it's a live stream, I will not be able to see your face or give you as many examples as I can think of. So it will be a bit shorter than usual. So um, if you have any comments, if you don't know anything or if you are still blur regarding things that I've said in this live stream, drop me a comment or make an appointment with me next week. I should be well enough. If I'm well enough this Thursday, I will be in college this Thursday. And if I can't, then I will be in college next week. That's confirmed because the doctor has cleared me for next, uh, for next week, but not this week. So yeah, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's just run, jump right into it, all right? All right, so this will be the topic for today. KM Tools and Technology. Now, before this, we have talked about how to capture knowledge, how to manage knowledge, and even how to uh, set KM objectives, how to set a KM strategy for them. But right now, what are the different tools that you can use all right, in order to capture knowledge, in order to manage it, in order to disseminate it? This is what we're going to be dealing with today. All right, so it's in your book, so you can refer to it at any moment. Now, when we talk about data, when we talk about you getting knowledge, when we talk about HR or, or, or CLO, CKOs, they gather knowledge, they gather, da they gather data. What kind of data are we talking about right here? Essentially, there are three types of data that we can talk about. Number one is information about people. Now, there's a clear distinction between informi data, information, and knowledge. All right, we're going to talk about this three, the distinction between these three later on. Okay, but just know that information, data is not information, and information is not knowledge until you make sense of it. Okay, I'll explain later on. So, first of all, when KM managers or, le or even HR managers or even CEOs, managers, supervisors, when they gather data, they can gather data about people. Alright, they get data about people, they, they can do observation, they can 
even through interview or even through social interaction, your Saki model, okay, through socialization, you are able to extract information regarding people, how they work, what kind of knowledge they have, what kind of uh, tacit, what kind of implicit knowledge they do have. So this is the first category of data, individual level, people. Right, the next category is about the organization. Now it's different. Okay, some people may say you know, some people may say that the people, the organization are the people, but not really. Okay, when we talk about organizing information about organization right here, we're talking about the performance of the organization, organizational memory. Right? Remember organizational memory is where all this learned knowledge, all these learned lessons from all the different projects or all the different experiences that they have. Right? These are the information regarding the information uh, regarding the organization that I'm talking about. For example, Tony Fernandez, all right, if you look at the CEO of AirAsia, Tony Fernandez, he may have certain <coughs> certain information regarding his pilots, regarding his <coughs> workers, clerks, managers. And what those information he obtained from where? From his personal observation, through interviews, through surveys. And um, this uh, information about his workforce. But what about his organization, Air Asia as a whole? Information regarding organization can be stock exchange, uh, ROIs, you see, ROIs or public sentiments, marketing data, or all but public performance, the stock, all of these things can be information regarding the organization. So those are these two. Alright, so if you are still confused, send a chat, uh, send a chat in the live chat there and I can I'm able to answer. Alright. So next will be data. They are created as a result of interaction between these two categories. Now, first of all, we have information regarding people. Next, we have information regarding organization. If these two interact, okay, if these two interact, we will form another form of data. For example, let's say your let, let's say the uh, the workers of Asia, okay, the pilots of Asia have an idea regarding the organization or regarding, regarding the marketing strategies of organizations in a good K, in a good KM environment the pilots will be able to share information with the marketing team or with the marketing department now this exchange of data is either through socialization externalization internalization or combination this particular exchange of data is what we call interaction between these two categories all right so if you can see if you can see from this particular diagram right here the people Okay, will interact with the process. Okay, will interact with the technology, and this is the area that we are looking for right here: people, process, and technology. As the slides mentioned here, technology is used to facilitate the primary communication, collaboration, and content management for better knowledge capture, sharing, dissemination, and application. Now, these are the few keywords. Ah, uh. okay, these are the few keywords. So let's say the exam. Okay, it talks about technology. Please make sure that you define it using this way first, because because this is what technology is about. Technology is not knowledge. Technology is not a management. It's not a management solution for KM. Technology is to facilitate. Is to help. All right. Primary communication, collaboration, and knowledge management for better knowledge capture. All right. Sharing, dissemination, and application. So these are the different things that we can able to talk about right here all right so if any questions please put it down in the chat below all right so i'm going to go to the next one now normal km a uh, normal km strategy normal km architecture or km technology uses what we call the n-tier architecture what is the n-tier architecture n-tier architecture is another name for multi-tier architecture imagine architect imagine the um, Imagine each of this, okay. Imagine each of okay. I'm gonna switch it over. I'm gonna switch it over to another view so you can uh, see me better. Okay. Now, imagine, okay. Imagine this your technological your technological um, okay tier. So sorry, your technological facilities KM facilities in your company. Okay, in your company is. Multi tier. Let's take for example Gongcha. So if I love that, I just love to take Gongcha as an example. If you have, if you guys um, have not realized this by now, if you take a look at Gongcha's KM strategy, all right, what? Take a look at the technology. Take a look at the technology, the KM technology that you do have over there. The, when you first walk in, what do you see? You see the server right there, right? You see the point of sale system. Point of sale system is what we is this desktop computer right here. It's where your know, the the, the 
the tablet is where they will key in your order and it will go through a particular server usually these things are all localized so they go through the server they'll go to the queue they'll go to the queue management uh, queue management facility or queue management tool all right but and tier architecture right here we're dealing with the internet we're dealing with something larger okay so for Organizations like Subway, Asia, Mars, all right, these big names, they will have this style of architecture, multi-tiered. Right? From here, you can see it's the database management system and application servers and web servers. This fine example of this is your Collaborate. All right? Database management system, this thing is the things that you see on Collaborate. When you go into View Collaborate, the first thing that you see is this thing right here. All right, so where all this where all this information uploaded or stored is in this application server in our IT room. This is where everything is stored and it is backed up in a web server back in VU in Australia. All right, the web server over there is there and they are all connected by internet. So you can go to collaborate to your phone, to your, uh, to your computer, to your from your PC, from your laptops, from your tablets, okay? You are connected through the internet and shared. Now, this is an effective form of knowledge management. Sorry, knowledge management as well. Because employees can get information on the fly wherever they are, when, where, whichever the part of the world they are, wherever they are, and they can get it 24 7. All right, because it's backed up on the internet. All right, so this next activity right there because i'm not there okay i'm not there in, i'm not there at college so i cannot do this but what they want to tell you is here is cloud computing now cloud computing is something very new in in the it world today not i mean relatively new you only started about five years ago we've been hearing about cloud computing about when it was first implemented about five six years ago if you guys remember dropbox all right, if you guys used Dropbox before, I've talked about it in class last time. It is a form of cloud computing. Now, cloud computing is a revolution in the KM industry because the in, in the in the KM sense because it allows people to contribute endlessly into a particular server or in, into a particular Dropbox or a particular folder. Okay, and they are able to store it not on the PC itself but on an offshore server. Usually, that's what they call the cloud. So information can be accessed on the fly, on the go, twenty four seven. All right, and there is no risk of uh, downloading data. There is no risk of losing that particular data because everything is on the cloud. All right, so all the information you can read right there and it's in your book as well. So cloud computing uses external web service. All right, the most popular at the moment is Google Drive. All right, but last time people used to use Dropbox quite a lot. I used Dropbox last time and if you use Dropbox before, you know how useful is it. All right, so right now people are starting to move towards the bigger ones like Google, I mean Google Drive, uh, OneDrive. Okay, you're using OneDrive at the moment actually because of uh, Sunway, they're using they have this partnership with Microsoft. So you are already using cloud computing in a sense. Now applications are delivered and accessed over the web any place, anytime with multiple choices of devices, especially the iPhone, with the iPad, or even your laptop. So basically, a single file can be edited, can be uploaded, can be viewed by multiple people, multiple times, okay, across all the different regions around the world. This is the power of cloud computing. Now this is very, very useful in terms of KM, okay, in terms of KM in, uh, if your company is multinational, let's say you have an office, uh, let's say you have an office in um, Singapore, and you have an office in Malaysia, and you have an office in have a branch in uh, Japan, and you have a branch in Korea, you have a branch in Australia. Let's say, all right. So how does all of these different branches communicate knowledge with each other, especially your text knowledge? How? All right. It's through the power of cloud computing. All right. So the each branch are able to upload to a particular server and each of these branches employees are able to view files across all these different places okay so this is one of the tools that you can use to manage knowledge right there okay and cloud computing can be sold on demand all right so you can get it on the go on the spot okay basically that's what it means and uh, there are three basically there are three general service categories are right, commonly used in cloud computing there are three if you're this is very it so if you don't understand okay if you don't understand don't worry just do some research online and you should you should be able to understand all right just this one is just for your knowledge all right so it's infrastructure platform and software usually for businesses we go with platform and software not so much of infrastructure but if you have interviewed it managers or they they act as km managers they work emphasize a lot of infrastructure infrastructure is your hardware 
All right, it's a hard way. Remember that time the uh, when Miss Catherine came and she gave a blog lecture regarding Kim and her business. All right, she said lack of infrastructure. That means lack of facilities to share information, to share knowledge. All right, that's what she meant. All right, so but businesses usually they focus on platform and software, not so much on infrastructure. That's why you see there's a lack of infrastructure right there. And it reduces software equipment capital overlays. I mean, if you, let's say you have um, cloud storage or cloud computing, you are actually decreasing the amount of hardware and the amount of software licenses that you have to pay. Okay, you don't have to pay tens of thousands of ringgit just to have a good KM software. You can actually use a free one in cloud computing. You just need to have a very good the um, access system, right? And evaluation must include a thorough security analysis. Now, it. Using cloud computing, the biggest risk is actually security. You you want all of your text and all of your explicit knowledge to be stored securely. Alright, so if let's say, okay, if let's say your cloud computing isn't encrypted really well, all the text set, all the explicit knowledge that you find that you want to store can be easily accessed by anyone. Alright, so it is not secure. So when you want to use a cloud computing, okay. When you're a CKO, when you're a CLO, please make sure that you choose a cloud computing service that is secure, okay? And it's full of security like that. All right, so uh, as I said before, if there are any questions like to ask me, please put it down in the chat below, all right? So I can ask, I can answer accordingly, all right? So uh, everybody good to go? So far, there are about three of you guys watching. So I'm sure you okay right now. If everything's okay, then I'll move on, all right? If there are any questions, Please put that down below. Now, as I said earlier on this live stream, there is a difference between data, information, and knowledge. Having data doesn't mean that you have information. Having information doesn't mean that you have knowledge. Now, what are the differences between these three? Let's take a look. Now, data are the facts, okay? The facts that you gather regarding your employees, regarding your business, regarding your company. These are raw data that you generate from your surveys from your data collection tactics the, the techniques the, the the ones we talked about last week all right those are the different things now once you gather all of these things you get what we call facts or what we call data now how to turn data into information information is the interpretation of the data is the analysis of that particular data once you have data and you start to analyze the data you start to make sense of the data that data becomes information. And when does information become knowledge then? Information becomes knowledge when it has been given meaning. What are you going to do with that information? You know that your uh, you know that your employees has a, have a certain skill. Okay, your employees have a certain skill, let's say in customer service, in um, in terms of uh, contract negotiation. So how do you turn this information into knowledge? It's the meaning that you give to that. All right, once you know that you once you've identified that your worker has this particular text knowledge that you want to extract, and that particular thing becomes a data, all right, becomes a data that you gather. Once you gather the data, these are your facts. What are you gonna do with it? Okay, you interpret it, you analyze it, you say, oh, okay, um, let's say this person has knowledge of a text knowledge of contract negotiation. So this is your interpretation, this becomes your information. What are you gonna do with it? Are you going to make any sense of it? Alright, once you make sense of it, once you give it meaning, once you say, okay, a person A has this knowledge on contract management, okay, on contract negotiation. So now I am going to let him or her take up a project, okay, prove his or her worth, now train the rest of the workers or put him, put him or her under a particular team and he be, he or she becomes the leader and disseminate the knowledge. Now this becomes knowledge. Alright, so data information knowledge or DIK. Alright, this this uh this is already in your book, alright? So I'll get to Google about it, you can read it by yourself then. Clear? Any questions so far? No? Let's move on. Now, HR professionals use data and information regarding employees and jobs to make strategic recommendations and decisions, especially when it comes to training and development. All right, so whenever HR interviews people, okay, they will use this data, they will use this information regarding their employees in order to employ them. They will gather information regarding the, uh, the job or the particular company first, see what sort of, um, in what sort of knowledge, what sort of skills they need or don't have, all right? And when they interview people, when they interview prospect, uh, prospective, uh, prospective employees, this is what they will look for. This is where these things will go backwards, all right? So they will have the knowledge, 
they will regress knowledge, information, and data. Hence, this thing right here. Okay, data turn to information to knowledge. Clear? Okay, if you're, if you're still blurred, if you have any questions you have to ask me, please comment down below. All right, so far, okay. Okay, uh, so far, the South Tamil by the name of Wigwe has just said, yes, I'm, I'm not sure what do you mean by that. But if you understand that, then let's move on. So this is another infographic on information versus knowledge. All right. So if you uh, right now I've set the live stream to you can see my face right here. All right. But if you find it's a bit it's a bit of a distraction, you cannot see the graphics or the information quite well. Just tell me in the comments down below. That and then I will switch it to to the next one. All right. So over here is the the infographic that you can see regarding information versus knowledge. But information is just a collection of facts. All right, and it's a, it involves one-way communication. You share once and you never use it again. This is information. Let's say I tell you an information regarding, let's say, um, Justin Bieber is coming to JB for a concert. All right, so this is just a collection of facts and figures for you. All right, it's a one-way communication me to you. Let's say you're not interested in Justin Bieber, you're not a fan of Justin Bieber, you just share once. Oh, Justin Bieber is coming to Sami College and then now, you're never going to use it again. So these are just information versus knowledge. Knowledge consists of insights and interpretations, analysis of the particular knowledge. Let's say my information I give you. Okay, final exam for KMP final exam is, is going to be focused on this chapter, this chapter, this chapter. It's no longer just facts and figures if you give some insights, if you analyze whatever that I said. All right, if you share between your friends and your friends share between their friends and they use this particular knowledge. All right, so inf that information is being transformed into knowledge in such a way. All right, so all these different frameworks and theories you can read by your own down there. All right. And these are the, all the different infographics right there. Remember, communication is one-to-one. -one. Interaction is both ways. Okay, I talk to A, A, uh, A talk to B. All right, collaboration is everybody together. All right, one-to-many, many-to-one. These are all just very simple concepts that you can read by yourself, all right, at home. So many portals, many KM portals out there, they focus on one-to-many communication. It's really not personal, not engaging at all. all right? So for VU, they have given you this particular example. I'm not sure what kind of website is this, but they have uh, said it's poor uh, exploration, not engaging, not personal, one-to-many, not social, no editing, no commenting. All right? So these, remember these are portals, internal portals that employees can access, not your customers. So please be very aware of this when you analyze websites or you, when you analyze um, systems later on in your assignment, please don't confuse between customer, okay, whatever that they put up there to the public and what the staff can see. What you want to analyze later on is what the staff themselves can see. Remember, your focus is on human capital, all right? The workers in that, the workers in that particular company, not how the public perceives them. Okay, don't make the same mistake that I made. Alright, so this is just an example. Now this is a good one. Alright, this is a good one. Uh, a good KM site, a good KM site for a particular company. It has searches, it has likes, it has edits and views, editorial section tags, comments, etc. Alright, so these are the different features of a particular website. I'm very, very sure you can use, uh, you can see your the, the company that you have selected or the shop that you have selected for your assignment, you can view whatever it is that they have and look for these things. I right, look at whether anybody can contribute to that particular um, knowledge field, be it explicit or explicit or fixed. All right, and then well, can people look for it easily? Can people edit it easily? Are there any tags or people can leave comments? So these are the things that you can comment on it. All right, somebody told me, uh, somebody mentioned to me that they're doing Subway. All right, I'm not sure whether from your group or from, 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 from some other group, they said that the, uh, the particular system that they have is already perfect. And then they asked me whether how else can they improve. Now, these are the different things that you can comment on because no one system is perfect. If let's say the particular system doesn't allow interaction between each subway uh, employees, let's say the, the, the sandwich artist, they call it, can not interact or share knowledge with another sandwich artist in KL or in Subang, right? that is not considered a very good KM system. So how are you going to make it better? Okay? So that is the few questions I have to answer in your particular assignment. All right? So these are just another um, example of a KM system right there. You can read it by yourself. 
Now, DBMS, or Database Management Software. Now, this is a set of software applications combined with a database. Remember, you need a database to store all, all of the knowledge in. So now, this software is to manage that particular database. Because if, let's say, you were just storing it, okay, storing it haphazardly inside, that you will look very, very messy. All right. So this particular software manages this database. All right. And an example of this would be the IBM's Passive Alarm technology. Now, since this is the live stream, uh, I'm not able to spit you guys up into groups and ask you guys to research on this. Uh, if you guys are in class, I can do that. But right now, you guys just have to read it by yourself. All right. So if you still don't understand, you can either send me an email. Okay, send me an email or make an appointment with me next week. All right. So I can explain to you guys a little bit better. Okay. At this point. Okay. So everybody cool? So there are still there are five people watching. So this is five people. Are you guys okay? If you guys are okay, then I will move on. All right. If you are not okay, if you're still confused at this point or want me to re-explain certain things, all right, just drop a comment down below. Okay. Clear? Good. Let's move on. So these are some of the classifications of an LMS or a learning management system. All right. So we have three tiers. First of all, is the administration system. Administration system is what the HR sees. It's what the, uh, the managers, it's what the CEOs, they see. All right. It can be classified under different things. Now, basically, HR will have control of the system or the care manager will have control of the system because this particular system has basic employee training and development records. It has the calculation cost of a uh, calculation of cost of training programs to see whether it is um, feasible to conduct this particular training program. I'm sorry. Okay, and it has uh, administrative permissions can edit, can access, can override. All right, so this is it. And next is a training management system, scheduling, trainings, all right, basically a system that can set up all of these things. Actually, right here, okay, right here, the, the things I'm doing right now, this live stream, is already a form of learning management, all right? Yeah, this, think of this, 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 think of it this way. Today, I'm not able to come to class, okay, because I'm sick, I'm still contagious, okay? I do not want to uh, spread my shingles to you or anybody who hasn't had chicken pox before. So, I'm at home, okay? I'm home resting as the doctors prescribed. I was given like a few days MC. So, uh, not just a few days, two weeks MC to be precise. Now, the, the very act that I cannot be there, does that mean that does that mean that I'm not able to transfer what I know to you? No. This live stream is one of the examples. This live stream is one of the training management systems right there through YouTube, all right, through YouTube, through computer, through the internet. This is one of them. So imagine it this way. Imagine if you are an employee who is overseas, okay, who is overseas, or a particular trainer who is overseas, or a particular company who cannot afford the the, the airfare, the accommodation to bring in a training officer or a training uh, a trainer to come and train and develop your talent right there in your company. You can do this. This is one of the system that you can use later on. So if let's say you're telling if let's say um, Subway is saying that oh they do have video conferencing okay between the managers or between the uh, between the managers between the, the the supervisors okay to discuss strategies or or even near telephone conversations something as simple as that it can be a KM system it's just that they don't know that it is the KM system all right so um this is the and next is talent management system. Talent management system is usually controlled by HR, usually. All right, but if uh, the particular company doesn't have HR or doesn't have IT or doesn't have a particular KM manager, this fall this all falls under the manager, the owner, the CEO, or whatever it is that is managing the company. All right, so it contains knowledge, skills, and attitudes assessment for all of the employees, performance reviews and appraisals, recruiting, success planning, career planning, and management development. Now this. An example of this you have seen and I've showed it to you under Sunway. Okay, remember the uh, success factor software? Okay, this is Sunway's answer to the talent management system right there. And inside the particular system is multi tiered. All right, so the HR can have certain access. Okay, the uh, my boss, Miss Ong, all has a certain access to it. All right, so these are all LMS. Get it? Any questions so far? Okay, I'm waiting for questions in the chat. All right, so there are, so far there are four live. Uh, watches right there. If there are no questions, then I will proceed. Okay. So these are the different applications of our LMS. Okay, it can 
help in management, it can help in decision support, it can help in group decision, it can help in expert systems, and it can help in AI. All right, for details, examples of this application, they are all in your book. All right, so just read up on it. And the particular case study previously, all right, on the IBM case study, read that. Okay, read that, understand that, and you should be able to see these are the different applications of LMS. Clear? Let's move on. So uh, as I said before, if, I, if I'm in class at this point, I would have given you guys a break uh, or like <laughs> it would have been about 10.30 by now because I would have uh, you know, given more activities. But at this point, I cannot do this activity so you can just um, do your own independent research on this, alright? So now tools and techniques for each step of this of the KM cycle. Now, if you realize that this particular cycle right here, okay, this particular thing, it looks very, very similar or it's an expanded version of your KM cycle. This tool is your first stage, knowledge capture and codification. All right, knowledge, uh, sorry, knowledge capture and creation. These two are your first stage. All right, your second stage is right here, publish and disseminate is knowledge sharing and dissemination and knowledge acquisition and application is right here. All right, so they are all under this big cycle that you have learned previously and now I'm just trying to tell you the different tools and techniques you can use for each particular cycle all right so I think this part is going to go really really fast all right so for capture and store you can use knowledge mapping now knowledge mapping I've introduced since the very first week of class itself all right so you can use it to define templates identify authors manage work capture processes and whatnot all right so these are the different examples now these are just different uh, the Definition of a knowledge map is already given to you right in the first week itself, so I don't have to explain this. This is an example of it. Remember, you guys did all the maps, all right? If you've forgotten about it, all right, check your WhatsApp group. Pictures have been shared over there as well. All right, so these are just some of the uh, knowledge maps examples. Next would be the checklist. Okay, checklist is very good to be used in search and retrieve. All right, search and retrieve portion of your KM cycle. It's a search inquiry, all right? Um, your employees can just search for information that they need. Remember, this is a very, very uh, important step. If you don't do this step, the, remember the case study that we did in week two, okay? Um, the contact, uh, contact BG, uh, uh, RD, uh, NP, okay, that particular case study, right? So if you don't have this uh, uh, efficient system to for search and retrieving knowledge or search, searching and retrieving information, that thing's gonna happen, all right? So you can just read the things down there. Disseminate or publish, these are some of the things that we talked about last week or two weeks ago. It's round thing, how you deliver the particular knowledge, how you put it out there, how you publish it, all right? And a structure and navigate, how is it structured? Okay, how is it the, the user interface? How is it uh, how, how is it designed? Okay, <clears throat> and then um, is it designed in such a way to identify different COPs? Can different COPs access it? All right, can one COP access the particular knowledge and can the other COP access this particular knowledge? So this is what it meant by that. You, uh, in summary, basically, this particular stage is how your system is designed. Okay, basically, it's about that, all right? And next is share and collaborate. How is information shared across different people? Okay, so you can read it by yourself right there. Okay, so collaborate is basically uh, this most important step in uh, KM because KM is about sharing knowledge, it's about transferring knowledge, all right? So getting the right knowledge to the right people at the right place at the right time, all right? Remember that particular definition, huh? So in order to do this in order to know what tacit or what explicit knowledge that each person would have. All right, so we need to collaborate. The system will allow you to collaborate with each other. All right, so you can find people, you can validate information, you can facilitate, you can mediate, you can augment, share, and align. Okay, I'm gonna show you a few things that we are. Uh, VU has a few examples in which I agree anyway. All right, on how these things can be achieved, which I'm gonna talk about it later on. Okay, so far so good. So far, there are five, still five people watching. So these five so far so good? Good, let's move on. So now, we're gonna go into groupware. Now, what is groupware? Now, groupware is a particular ability to work together and exchange information, be anywhere you are. Okay, right now, whatever that we're doing right here is a form of groupware. Okay, you can chat with me through the YouTube chat. You can view this, uh, you can view this live stream anywhere you want. If let's say you're still sleeping, if you wake up at one o'clock later on, or you're somewhere, you can you can catch up this lecture 
very far into uh, uh, any time you wish, all right? But for those of you who are watching it live, all right, you are able to share information with me. I'm able to share information with you right, right here, right now. Try typing something in the chat, all right? I will receive your comments or I will receive your chat on the go, all right? So this is where the exchange of information, the, the ability to work together comes in. Imagine right now, it's just one too many. Imagine if, let's say, you are doing a video conferencing. Okay, and uh, an evolved version of a Skype call. If you have ever in involved in a group Skype call, but a Skype call before, you know how chaotic it can be. But in a live stream form, in the current technology that we have, it's not going to be chaotic because you can mute, okay, you can select who to talk, okay, and then the system will be able to, um, to be able to meld you guys together in a virtual meeting, which is what we are doing now. Right now, we're having this virtual classroom thing. So this is a form of group web. Right, so for this is one of the clearest examples of groupware, which is a bit ironic because I, I intended this particular lesson to be uh, to, to be a substitute, not really a substitute to, to just be a, uh, a, a a trial thing so you guys won't miss that much of a lesson. But um, it, it became a perfect example for groupware. Alright, groupware is electronic technology, it's for person-to-person -person collaboration. Imagine you're doing this one to uh, one to uh, one to one or one to a few. Alright, imagine if your manager is doing this right now, right? Is having this online meeting with all of you and all of you are interacting through that group chat. Alright, so this is video conferencing, this is live streaming, alright, it can be done through email, work electronic meeting systems, desktop video conferencing, okay, software such as go to meeting. Google Hangouts now. Google, uh, now, one thing I want to note: Google Hangouts are going to uh, Google Hangouts is going to be replaced very soon. All right, so it's going to be a, a little bit outdated. Okay, quite soon. But um, you you can use uh, this live particular live stream as an example. You can use um, a lot of different softwares, um, streaming softwares of that as an example. Workflow or BPR. Okay, business process reengineering. So this is what collaboration is. Now, one of the clearest examples of collaboration is actually. Google Drive. Now, if you have used Google Drive before, okay, I've uh, used Google Drive before. It's a uh, it's a particular system that you can use to create a spreadsheet, Word documents, all right, online. And you can see, let's say person A, person B, okay, person A, person B, person A is in KL right now, and person B is in Kuching, and they need to meet. They need to meet to discuss and uh, to, to to share the information regarding the branch, uh, regarding what they found out in the branch over there or the branch over there. Okay, so how are these two going to meet? How are these two going to meet when they don't have money to buy tickets, when uh, you cannot express everything to a phone call? Okay, they need to type it down, to break things down. Now, Google Drive is one of the collaboration softwares of free collaboration software offered by Google. Okay, what these two can do is they can create Google accounts. Okay, if the company's accounts are really under Google, it's, it's even better. Then they can go to Google Docs, okay, Google Docs, and they can open up, a, they can create a new spreadsheet or a new Word document and they can share that particular document to the to whoever it is that they want to share and once they share both of them can be on the same document at the same time and then when they type things in they are able to see what each other typed and if they type something and that person erase it and edit it there are chat logs there are history logs see who deleted what inserted what all right i personally use this particular out but uh this Sorry, it's, it's very bitchy. All right, so um, I personally used this particular thing last time in my previous work in Fairview before, and it's really, really useful. All right, so one you can do it in OneDrive as well. All right, so these are some collaboration softwares that you can use as an example in your exams later on. Okay, so let's move on. Now, Groupware I have uh, explained just now. All right, is the Groupware supports the effort of teams or communities which require people to work together, even though they are not actually there at the same time or at the same space. So you can work from home, you can work from the office, you can work uh, overseas, you can basically connect with everyone, editing, um, ed editing your documents, contributing to a particular document all right, in real time and you can see who added what. All right? And it's a relatively new term coined in 1978. Right now, it's no longer new. All right, It's a core evolving human tool system, computer media, collaboration. Keyword here is collaboration. Clear? Good. Now, what is the role between groupware and technology? Basically, groupware and technology works very, very much hand in hand in KM. Now, employees can work anytime, anywhere. Now, um, in terms of uh, employees' perspective, is that like bring your home work with you. There is no work. Uh, there is no uh, work-life balance. But the focus here is the transfer of knowledge. All right, transfer of knowledge. So let's let's say that you're on a business trip. 
Okay, let's say you're on a business trip and you you found out there's some best practices, okay, which can be shared or which can be implemented from the previous com uh, for the company that you visited to your home company, and writing things down and telling it in a meeting like next week is not going to help. Right? So this type of technology is there to simulate information fast. Right? People from the United States can get updates, real-time updates from Malaysia. Okay, through this particular technology and HR has shifted to a more strategic focus approach and the deliverer of this are all cloud based there are no papers everything is on the cloud no USBs no nothing right which is very very efficient at this point okay so you can read the rest on that uh, this is your SharePoint 365 or in which what you are using right now your OneDrive all right, so you can just uh, read by yourself over here. Yammer is one of the things that you can try as well. Okay, it's already in uh, because Sunway uses Microsoft and this is a Microsoft software, so you can uh, try it out. Okay, you can uh, create a group. Uh, you can create a group for your assignment. Create a group for the ABC. If I'm not done it yet, all right. So you can do it right there and there. So just give it a try. I'm gonna try. If I'm there in class, I can demo it for you. But right now, it's just not possible for me to do that. All right. So you can do this by your own, right? You go to meeting, you can read this by your own. And these are the, this, these are the different technology that you can use. As you can see, social networking is one of them. Now, social networking has a lot of different features right now to support collaboration through Facebook Live, Instagram, Snapchat, all right, your WeChats, all can support this. All right, so, so social networking is still a relatively new player in KM. But it's really up to you how you want to use social networking as KM. All right, so it's completely up to you. If uh, I'm there at class at the moment, okay, I will split this up into different um, into different categories, and I'll ask each group to come up with a mind map for this. But I'm not there, so you just have to do a little bit of uh, independent learning at this point. Get it? Good. Now technology moves to small business, all right? You can see the small business can also use technology, all right? You can read it by yourself right here, but um, I will want to stress on small business. I would like to define the term small business. Small business right here is, uh, yes, it's a small business, but can you implement technology or IT, KM, okay? Can you implement KM through IT on a small business? For example, Let's talk about the Mochi store that I talked about last week. You can you actually picture that the, the, the uncle and auntie who's manning the Mochi store right there use technology for KM? Not really, okay, not really, because uh, they just simply don't have that particular knowledge. Out, okay, get that. Sorry, it is um, the, the glasses are touching my blisters. Okay, so um, where was I? Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you cannot actually see the auntie and uncle who is manning the uh, the little mochi store okay, using technology, using their iPads and whatnot. So it needs a generation shift. All right, sometimes small businesses it's just not it's just not cost effective for them to implement a technological based KM. So you so when you do your uh, assignment when you do your assignment later on, you have to be realistic. What are the business goals? What are the KM goals you want to set? If you want to set KM goals to implement a system. Okay, to implement a system, it costs more than the annual, the, the, the particular uh, profit that they have, but it's not a very good strategy, alright? Keep that in mind, okay? Understand so far? Good. Now, trends in information systems. Now, software as a service, alright, they, uh, they are able to do this. So, success factors, this is the this is the one that we uh, somebody is using at the moment, but there are a lot more. Okay, I've shown you this already, so all these statistics you can read by yourself at home, alright? So Web 2.0 as well. Web 2.0, their social networking sites, uh, they are calling it the second generation of the web focus service. If you have seen Web 1.0, it's actually very primitive. All right, if you've seen the earlier version of Facebook, or if you've seen Friendster, it is that first generation. But right now, things are more connected. Things are more advanced. All right, they are live streaming right now. Okay, they are. Okay, they are. They are video conferencing. They are cloud computing and all these things. All right, so what? The, the one that we are doing right now is actually podcasting. Okay, it's actually an evolved, more evolved version. All right, our podcasting is video, uh, it's live video recording. So this is one of the things, okay, this is one of the things that in Web 2.0 that you can use. Okay, so um, if I'm there, I would ask you to come up with a few examples, all right, and how is it used, but I'm not there, so just ignore this for a moment. All right, so this is your answer for that particular one. If you have downloaded this on uh, Will you collaborate? I think you can view this. Now, next 
is on synthesize. Synthesize, you can read it by yourself. It's a combination, okay, combination of uh, different information or different knowledge. You can use checklists as well. Okay, profile and personalize. You can um, align personal goals with business goals. Okay, you can, uh, these are all in your book. Huh? Just read and find a few examples inside that. Next is social networking. Now, social networking or SNW or SNS, okay, social networking sites, they are relatively new players, okay, into the uh, KM in, uh, into the KM sector. But a lot of a, a, a lot of um, sorry, a lot of different companies are starting to use it. They have their they have their own Facebook page, they have their own Facebook group, they have their own uh, LinkedIn uh, things, and then even President Trump has started to use Twitter to give out information even before Congress knows about it. So it has become a very good way to share knowledge or to disseminate knowledge. So social networking, there are a lot of case studies that and it's ever growing. Now today we have a lot of different social networking uh, sites down there. Um, YouTube is one of them. Okay, YouTube is one of them. Um, Facebook is one of them. How you use it is completely up to the particular business. Clear? Now, software recommend, you can, uh, this, this, these are just what you're doing in your assignment right now, already setting a goal, setting a solution, making a recommendation. Okay, and these are the other tools that you can use for knowledge sharing. If I'm there, I will explain one by one. But basically, it's just very tedious, and a lot of these things you are you are already very well aware of, right? Some of the things that we discussed before, like intranets, document search, web portals, information filters, CRMs, all of these things we've talked about it before in the previous weeks. But if you are blur, if you are still, uh, if you still need more clarification regarding all of these things, please just hit me down at the chat down below, or send me an email, or uh, just send me anything. Okay, so uh, I'm able to explain it for you. Good. Now, these are all the different challenge, challenge expectations and performance through Facebook and Kodak. And these are all just case studies, all right? So you can read it by yourself, okay? You're all degree students. You're able to see this all by yourself, all right? Uh, so these are just some of the different statistics, challenging in every industry, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can read this all by yourself, all right? Now, this is a very good video, okay? This is a very, very good video that you can uh, search on YouTube at the moment. So after this live stream, Okay, just open up a new tab in YouTube and search for humans need not apply. Okay, and watch the video. This particular video um, is uh, it's about a CGP grade. Okay, it's, uh, it's by CGP grade. You can view it right now. Okay, if you want to. It's, it talks about how uh, future trends, okay, if you, uh, come on, sorry, talk about how few technology will take over the workforce. Okay, through knowledge, all right? And then you will see how redundant humans really are and uh, how is it, um, how the communication between companies and uh, and the workforce and the robots have changed. All right, it's a very very interesting video. I watched this video like years back. Okay, when, when I worked in uh, Fairview, I watched this video last time. It, so it's a very insightful video. So you can go and watch. Right. So these are just some of the examples that you can uh, see online. And that's it. Now next lecture, which is next week for your group. Okay, for group C. Uh, I won't be around because I'm taking my dad to the clinic, so I will be replacing the class. But I'll be replacing the class most likely on a Thursday. Okay, most likely on Thursday, I will confirm with you guys uh, very soon. Okay, so but what I'm gonna do next week because strategic KM good practices I've done it like last week. So what I'm gonna do next week is I'm gonna be splitting you guys into groups and I'm gonna be giving you sample exam questions in order for you to do. And then I'm most likely gonna end the class a little bit earlier also so you guys can work on your assignment because that time will be the final stretch because after that, the week, in the next two weeks is your presentation. All right, so this week and next week is your crunch time for your assignment. It's time for, for you to do your reports, make sense, or right, transcribe your interview details. Again, if you're watching this live stream at the moment, so about five of you are watching at the moment. Okay, Lisa just asked, sorry, I did not check the chat. Lisa just asked, is this tools function similar to each other? You mean these tools, is it? Okay, these tools. Not all. Okay, Lisa, not all. Okay, like teamware and group memory context, they function a little bit differently, but they are all, they are, they are all, sorry, they, they function differently, but they are all targeting the same objective. It's to share knowledge, it's to, uh, it's to share knowledge, it's to disseminate knowledge, right? They have the same, they, they have different functions, but have the same objective, all right? So these are just some of the tools that the companies can use in order to reach that particular objective or reach that particular goal of knowledge sharing and knowledge management. 
Okay, how to manage them, how to share them. Clear, Lisa? Clear? Now, functions can be a little bit different from each other. It depends. Let's say AI tools, okay, AI tools right here can be a bit costly. Can be a bit costly for the particular company to implement. So they might want to go with teamware, groupware, like whatever that we are doing just now. Or if they cannot afford, or if, if they cannot afford the um, if they cannot afford um, an internet system, they can go with relational database. They can go with a traditional book. These are all these, these are all just different tools that the companies can use in order to share and disseminate knowledge. Function slightly differently from each other, but work for the same objective. Clear, Lisa? Very good. All right. Thank you. So this, you see, knowledge sharing right there. Okay. Now, uh, where was I? Okay. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, in terms of assignment, so if you uh, you need this extra time this week, next week in order to finish up, all right. So this week there's no class, but I'm doing my live stream for almost one hour now. So um, if you if you've gotten it, okay, if you have, if you are clear regarding today's uh, lecture, okay, because this is what basically I want to tell you, which is not going to be relevant a little bit for your um, a little bit okay for your assignment, but this is the time for you to start. Okay, if you have not interviewed people yet, go and interview. If you have not transcribed it, go and transcribe Transcribe. If you have interview, transcribe, you need to analyze it because next week I'm going to do your exam revision. Okay, I'm going to be giving a sample exam uh, papers to do and I'm going to discuss the answers and the, next, the week after that will be your presentation and after that will be your revision week ready, will be your final week. Alright, so there is no more time to waste for regarding your assignment. Alright, so before I end, Again, before I end the live stream for the seven of you watching, any questions regarding your assignment that you'd like to ask me? Okay, so I'm going to be chatting, uh, I'm going to be uh, checking the chats down there. Okay, I'm going to be chatting the chats down there. Now, for those of you who missed this particular live stream, okay, if you missed it, you're watching it on the delayed telecast, all right, to the link that your friends shared. Okay, um, you can drop me, you can send me a, a Questions on, uh, on WhatsApp. Okay, let me just check WhatsApp for a while. Okay, let me just check WhatsApp for a while and see whether anybody has. Um... Okay, so no questions on WhatsApp. Now, if you have any questions, just put me, just uh, send me a message on WhatsApp or email. Now, with regards to email, okay, I will be a little bit slow in terms of responding to you guys um, because I, I. <laughs> I need to rest. Okay, I need to rest as you can see from my face right here. So, um, okay, let me just uh, switch it back. Let me, let me just switch it back to camera view. All right. Now, as you can see from the um, from my face right here, I uh, I'm actually not well. Okay, I'm actually not well. Um, but I'll try my best. I know some of you have sent me your questionnaires in uh, quite questionnaires for me to edit. Okay, and I've not done so. Uh, but rest assured that I will try to get it done by today. Okay, uh, I will just need to rest after this, take my medicine, just rest. Okay, and um, yeah, basically just rest. All right, so any questions, the assignment of you? Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, now I'm ending this live stream. I have been streaming for about 52 minutes right now. So if there are any more questions, feel free to just drop me an email, drop me a WhatsApp message, drop me a Facebook message, or what, all right? So for those of you who are watching on the live stream, Thank you so, so much. All right. Thank you so, so much. You can uh, give your feedback if you like, uh, if you like this live stream. This is something I've never done before. So um, if it's smooth for you, just leave a comment down there as well. All right. So thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, and I'm so, so, so sorry that I cannot be there for class today. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for attending this live stream. And thank you so, so much for watching. And uh, good luck for your assignment. Okay. Peace out.